Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader. We're mainly going to cover today mini rigs, vehicles, and play sets. But to start off the video, I do have a couple of power droids that I had to talk about, as well as uh, some ESB mint on card action figures. And then we dig right into the vehicles, play sets, things like that, that I, I just kind of wanted to cover all in one video. As always, thanks to my Patreon supporters. They make this channel happen. Check out my snazzy new shirt, Lily Letty. My wife got this for me. How cool is that? So I finally got a different t-shirt to wear as I make these stupid videos, even though all, you only see my stupid head. Uh, I did finally get a new t-shirt. It's my first new t-shirt in probably two years. Um, all right, let's take a look. First of all, we've got two different power droids, as I mentioned. The first one is a 21 back A clear blister. The title of the eBay listing is incorrect. It was a 21 back A power droid. Lots of price stickers, upper right hand corner, punched example, graded CAS 75, 285 subscores. That one sold in a buy it now situation for 750 Canadian, which is 540 bucks. I think that's a pretty fair deal given that. 21A power droids ungraded can sell for close to that price in similar condition. I thought that was probably appropriately graded. Felt like a 75 to me just looking at the hanger tab there. Pretty big crease right above the hang tab and some wear around the hang tab itself. So I thought 75 grade was about right. Um, and then here is the other one that sold. This was an AFA 85 20 back G power droid. Unpunched, no price ticker. And you can see the difference in price. I know they're not exactly the same card. It's not apples to apples, but both early Star Wars racetrack card backs. 20 back G straight 85s with the prototype FET offer on the back there, or the rocket firing FET, excuse me. 1702 was the final price. So that one went a lot higher than I was expecting. I was I knew it would go high because it is an 85. And now that you can see the population reports, I'm sure that it's pretty high up there and, and not many of them are in 85 on the census. So that could be a driver. I was thinking 15 to 1600 in an auction. If this had been listed around 2000, I could see it selling 1800 in a make an offer. But uh, 1702 is probably not too far off a of fair market value, just given what grade it was. But it still surprised me that it went that high in an auction. Uh, some ESB car backs I wanted to cover mainly from Gold Star Tech, a seller that we talk about a lot. He just has a never-ending supply of vintage Star Wars. It's it's crazy. It's like they just never end. Every single day, I feel like they're listing stuff. This one was a 41 back D, Leia Bespin, yellow blister, unpunched. Pretty good shape otherwise, other than <clears throat> the yellow blister. 425 on that one. That one seems to be probably about right, maybe a little high, given the yellowing to the blister, but... In all fairness, it was unpunched. It was a really nice, clean card. Blister was in really good shape. Just yellowed. Uh, 425 is probably about right. You know, if this had been clear blister, I could see over 600 bucks pretty easily. But we've talked about Leia Bespin a lot lately and how it has come back down. It seems like that's one, you know, ESB, early ESB card back. For 31, uh, 31, 32 backs, 41 backs, 30 you know, 31 A's and B's, things like that. It just feels like those have come back down a little bit. So I was, you know, I was thinking th in the threes, somewhere around 350. So 425 is definitely a little higher than I expected. This one, I'm not terribly surprised it went as high as it did. Uh, it did have some damage around the hang tab. This is a 41D R2, but you can see the damage around the hang tab there. Clear blister, though. Blister was in great shape. Uh, but this is the last Solid Dome First 12 R2-D2 before they switched over to the R2-D2 sensor scope. The 45 back, I think, is the first one. Uh, so, you know, I can understand why it went so high because it was clear blister. But I, I just thought that given the hang tab creases, you know, this is at best going to get a 75 grade because of those creases. And 787... You know, uh, that, that's a little bit more than I personally would pay. I was thinking like 500 to 550, but maybe that's wishful thinking just given what it is. It's it's a little tougher one to find. Uh, Solid Dome R2-D2 on the 41 back, given that it was the last true mint on card variation available, to my knowledge. I'm not perfect at this stuff. Uh, another 41 back. This is a 41E Dangar, obviously yellowed with some damage to it. Not not perfect. 152.50, perfectly fine to pay that kind of price. A clear blister, you can easily double that price with a card that's in good shape. 
uh, but I thought that was very fair. Another yellowed blister, 47 back, Snaggletooth. Unpunched price sticker in the towards the middle of the card or, or middle top of the card. 255 again, that's probably about right. A clear blister in near mint minus condition probably sets you back 400 bucks. So 255 I thought was very fair, just given what it was and the yellowing to the blister. Uh, this was a nice one. I, you know, I, I wasn't sure if it was going to sell or not, but this is really kind of, we talk about this a lot. This is the poor man's debut card for Forlom, the 48 back, uh, 48 back C. He did apparently appear on some 48 back A's offerless, but very tough to find, very expensive. There's like one or two on the AFA population bar. It's very, very rare. So this is kind of the poor man's debut card. It was clear blister with the Kmart price sticker unpunched. It was listed at 600. I was like, well, you know, I could have seen that a year ago. I don't know if it's going to get that today, but it did. It did finally sell at 600 bucks. And I don't think that that's a terrible overpay, quite honestly. I mean, it's a really nice looking example. Just looking at the photos, I think it pretty easily gets an 80 or an 80 plus. So I, I understand why somebody was willing to pay that. Uh, on to the vehicles, mini rigs, and play sets. Uh, we've got two different mint and seal box speeder bikes that sold. The first one is the Canadian example, Véhicule Motorien Merlien. I can't speak French anymore. I've, I've totally forgotten it. Uh, but this is the Canadian example, mint and seal box, AFA 80. That one sold for $355. I thought that was a good deal. Really good deal for a foreign card back. I was thinking to go $450. I really did. I thought it was going to go at least $450. You know, $355 used to be what the U.S. box would go for in this kind of condition. So I was surprised by that. Uh, here was an ungraded one. CIB had a bunch of ungraded type stuff that just wasn't really grade quality, but I wanted to include it because it's CIB, their auctions, and it kind of gives you a good idea of maybe some, you know, ungraded type of items if you're into, you know, lower grade budget friendly items. 86 bucks on this one. Mint and seal box. Obviously, it had a, a, a crease on the flap at that price point, but I think you can get one of these in near mint minus condition without a flap crease. For like 150, you know, about double this price, maybe 175, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, but I thought that was a good deal. Uh, some other mini rigs that sold, never removed from box. So this one is no longer factory sealed, apparently. Uh, you know, it looks factory sealed from the photos, but it says in NRFB, never remove from box. That usually means to me that it's no longer factory sealed. They say MISB for mint and sealed box. So Again, I'm assuming these are qualifiable grade type items where it's just unused contents. 11027, the Forest Ranger, same situation. That one sold for 198.50. Very fair price, just given that the flap is, is still really clean on that one. It did have a tear right there, which is probably why it didn't get graded. And you can also see potentially where the factory tape was cut off there. It looks to me like it's been cut there. Next up, the Vehicle Maintenance Energizer. This one was graded AFA 80+. plus. I get the sense that somebody had a massive collection, sent it all to AFA, and said, grade whatever you want, and if it's not worth grading, then just sell it as is. I think that's what happened. You see that a lot with, a with AFA slash CIB right now. They they've been doing it for Mint on Cards lately, too. Some Mint on Cards that are not grade quality. They've just been selling them straight up. This one was graded AFA 80 plus, sold for 172.50. The Ewok Assault Catapult, again, not graded, never removed from box, 143.50. You know, we've seen some high grade examples, AFA graded examples. There you go. So you can see right here where the tape has been cut uh, or dried out, one of the two. <clears throat> but, you know, high grade examples for this, you can double that price, 300 bucks. So I thought that was very fair. I thought this was worth, worth showing you guys. This is a sealed box of Kellogg's cereal. Uh, some crazy person bought this and just kept the box. I dare somebody to buy this and eat it. And then after you die, I get your collection. <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine how nasty it's probably all just dust at this point, but somebody has got a sealed box of vintage Kellogg cereal with a creepy Luke Skywalker face mask on the back there. I, they had this for the DiGiorno's pizzas for the new Wolverine movie where it had Wolverine's face. And I cut it out and did a close-up of it with my stupid crazy eyes like this. And I put it on Rogue Five toys to freak people out. So that's what runs through my mind sometimes is to do stupid stuff like that and then post it to Rogue Five toys. It has absolutely nothing to do 
with Star Wars or a sales post, but it makes Chris mad when I do that. So that's Chris W. So I do that occasionally. I, you know, sometimes I'll post videos of me eating celery just to drive people crazy. Uh, but anyway, I did it with the DiGiorno's Wolverine Deadpool face. Uh, this one would have been a fun one to do too, but I'm not paying 90 bucks for it. <laughs> Uh, but somebody did pay $90 for a sealed box of Kellogg's C-3PO cereal. Uh, the Y-Wing fighter, this one was never removed from box. So again, you know, not grade worthy in their opinion or qualified grade worthy. Four fifty-five on that one. That one looks like it would get a 75 to me. So uh, I'm not sure why they didn't grade that one other than they just decided not to. The B-Wing fighter, that one sold for three forty. Again, not sealed. Again, maybe they just didn't want to pay for qualified grading. Maybe it costs more for qualified grading. I don't know. But the B-Wing Fighter did sell for $340. Uh, Job of the Hutt's playset, $132.50. Again, a really good deal there relative to some AFA-graded examples that we've seen on the channel lately in that three to five hundred dollar range. So uh, if you're looking for these kind of items, you know, this is a this is a reason why it didn't it wasn't graded. It was kind of beat up with the box and tears and things like that. But you know, it just wanted to give you guys some ideas for more budget-friendly items. Uh, the Rebel Snowspeeder is a nice one. This was had the ESB packaging with the blue sky background instead of the pink. Uh, that one sold for four eighty mint in box. Um, I don't know if that one is. Yeah. So this one is used contents. So the stickers had dried out. You know, you can see the stickers there above the actual sticker sheet. Uh, so it, it just kind of had dried out over time, but clearly had never been used before. But uh, 480 bucks on that one. We had Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. This is the collector series from a different seller. This one was graded AFA 60. So pretty low grade and it still sold for $820. 820 that to me seems crazy. I, there's no way I would pay that for an AFA 60. No offense if you happen to be the person that bought it. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying for me personally, I just think that that's a little bit too much to pay given that you can get a mint and seal box ungraded example for probably five to six hundred bucks or less and uh, it would be in better condition than this one you can see the obvious crunch in the lower left hand corner so in my opinion 820 is too much to pay for that for an afa 80 yes i would pay that uh but not for an afa 60 that's that's too much money uh the bespin freeze chamber this is the micro collection bespin freeze chamber one of the best toys ever made uh, AFA 75 mint in seal box, 255 bucks on that one. That's a tough one to track down if you're into the micro collection. And you can see there it's got the red label AFA, so it's mint in seal box, factory sealed. Nice deal on that one. And then finally was another mini rig. This one was the Power of the Force Sand Skimmer graded AFA 80. And uh, we did see one of these in the same grade or maybe an AFA 80 plus that sold for over $650 a few months ago, if memory serves. I'm going on memory. This one was an AFA 80 and sold for $565.55, so down a little bit from that uh, most recent sales price that I just vaguely remember. This one was an unpunched example with no price sticker and uh, went for a little bit cheaper, but it was obviously an auction. And uh, Gold Stars just got so much stuff coming on all the time that it's hard for collectors to keep up with their wallets. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at recent sales for mainly mini rigs, vehicles, play sets, things like that, along with a few mint on card vintage Star Wars action figures. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll be back soon.